G'day guys, Sammy Hitsky here and welcome to another Sammy Hitsky fishing adventure. Now you're joining us here off Cape Morton and we're doing a bit of jigging. And to start this video off, something a bit different and by popular demand, I'm going to show you some technique stuff. And then I'm going to show you the morning session we just had on the jig. So we're finished jigging for the day, I'm going to show you some technique stuff, then I'm going to show you the session we've just had. Now, we're going to start it off with the gear that you need. I've had a heap of questions about what gear I'm using, what rods, reels, all that sort of stuff. So we're going to start from the start and work our way all the way to the bottom. Get it? Pun. Righto. So the outfit I'm using here is a specialised slow jigging outfit. This is a Shimano Oshia Jigger 1500 HG reel. It's matched with a Shimano Oshia Jigger PE3 rod. I've got PE 1.5 Oshia Jigger line. I've got the whole Oshia Jigger set up there and I'm running 40 pound leader. Now you can use 30 pound, 40 pound, whatever you want. Depends on the terrain you're fishing and the fish you're targeting. Out here I'm chasing pearly, snapper, uh, kingfish, all that sort of stuff. So usually 40 pound is all you need. Anything more you're just kind of making more drag and resistance when you drop into the bottom. Now that's the setup. Now that's a very specialised setup. A lot of people aren't going to want to spend all that money on a very specialised setup that you can only really use for jigging and maybe a bit of float lining. So you would have seen the Phantom used something like this. So you can get away with a whole different setup if you want. So this is just pretty well a heavy soft plastics rod. I've got an 8,000 size reel, 50 pound braid, and I think this is a uh, this is a PE two to four rod. And he was running 40 pound leader as well. Same thing assist hooks and a slow jig and it ah, sticky hooks and attach the slow jig on there and he was doing just fine but one thing you will say you will notice is it is a lot easier winding up from the depths with something like this it's a lot easier fighting fish it's a lot easier working your jig but it is possible to get away with a setup like that if you need Okay, now the jigs we've actually tied on today, we've got a Savage Gear Squish Jig, we've got an EJ Todd Explorer Jig, um, that's just a couple that I've got in my bag there, there is heaps and heaps available on the market, Shimano make good ones, um, Hayabusa make good ones, there is heaps, so check out, our most tackle stores will have a big wall full of slow jigs, so you can go through and find some that tickle your fancy. Uh, in terms of weight and which ones you choose for what depths of water, my general rule is one gram per meter. Now that's my starting point and from there I adjust it either lighter or heavier. Now a lot of times you'll end up going heavier because the current's raging or you're drifting quite fast. So the only way you can stay in contact with that jig is if you're using a bit heavier. But always go one gram per meter and then work my way from there. Now if you've got a total glass out, you're not drifting at all, your line's straight up and down, you can go quite small and you'll get down no worries at all. It just takes a lot longer. Now the only time I'd change that equation is if I'm trying to use a bigger profile. So if I know there's really big snapper down there and I'm in 80 metres of water, I probably don't want to use a small 80 gram jig because it'd be quite small. I'd probably go up to 150 or something like that, something with a bit of profile, big fluttering action and try and sift through those smaller fish to target those big ones. Uh, aside from that, it works in reverse as well. If you know there's fish down there but they're being really fussy, they're not eating big jigs, you might have to scale it back to a smaller one until they uh, they open their mouths and, and start chewing. They're what I would consider good slow jigging options. Now they're both center weighted, so they're gonna drop like this horizontally and flutter on the way down. And that flutter is what I reckon attracts the fish and you'll find a lot of your hits come on the drop while that lure is fluttering down. Now the rigging you'll see is a lot different to what you'd normally um, associate with jigging. Usually you have one big single hook hanging off the top and that's it. With slow jigging, I like to run two double assists. So I've got, you'll see you've got double assists up the top there. So that's two assist hooks hanging off a solid ring. And then I've got a split ring, which attaches that little assist setup to the jig. So I tie my leader to the solid ring, got my split ring, and the jig. I don't know if the camera is going to pick that up. Show, should do. And then on the bottom, it's also got another eyelet there. I grab another set of assists, attach them via the split ring to the back of the jig. 
So when I'm ready to drop, my jig looks like that. Now, you might think that's a heap of hooks, way too many hooks to be hanging off a lure, but trust me, in slow jigging, they all help. Because those hooks are quite fine, um, you need them to be quite fine too for good hook penetration. You can actually straighten them out pretty easily while you're fighting the fish. But by having four, so two sets of double assists, what it does is spreads the load out between the hooks. You'll have one hook here, one hook there, another hook down here, another hook there. And it just ensures a really positive hookup, a good hook set, and um, make sure you don't straighten out those hooks and you don't pull as many hooks as well. So I like to run the four hooks. And that's where I can, if I'm fishing a really reefy environment or really rocky, um, snaggy, I'll, uh, I'll often change those bottom double hooks, uh, double assists, I'll change them to a single or leave them off completely. But that's only where it's really snaggy and you know you're gonna get constantly uh, caught up. So that's how I'd run them. Now, another thing you might notice there is these little squid skirts that I've got off the top and bottom uh, assist hook there. Now, I put them on myself. They're just a little bit of a f attractant. They actually glow in the dark and um, I reckon it just gives that lure a little bit of extra little dangly bits that are hanging off and just might be that little edge, that little convincing feature that the fish go, oh yeah, I'll have a crack at that. So that's what they are there, they're little Yamashita, what are they, panic, oh, they're called guppy baits, but you can get a whole heap of different ones. Um, I like the glow ones because they stand out down there. Now another thing you'll notice is both the jigs we're using today have glow rings on them. And I think that is very important. If you're gonna be slow jigging, that's them there. If you're gonna be slow jigging in anything over, I'd say 60 meters, I always like to have glow on my jig. So I reckon the fish see it, it stands out, it's going all crazy down the bottom of that as you work your jig up through the water column and the fish come in and clean it up. Um, I don't know if it's just a confidence thing or it actually really works, but I think anything that's down there where there's not that much light, it's dark, anything that's standing out like dogs' uh, ears <laughs> is, is gonna get eaten first. So that's the setup. Now the um, the knot I'm using here is just your standard uh, standard uni knot. I've got uh, what have I got? I've got a I think I've got an FG knot uh, attaching my leader to my braid, but it doesn't really matter. You can use whatever line joining knots you use you want to use and whatever um, connection knot you want to use. Let's just pretend we've found our fish on the sander and we're going to attack them. Now the key to jigging is keeping that jig pretty well directly under the boat. So it will require a bit of boat work. You'll be on and off the throttle in reverse just to keep that line directly below the boat. If you have your line tapering off on a big angle, then every time you flick your rod up to jig it, it's just gonna come up like that. It's never gonna get a chance to fall directly down and never gonna ch get a chance to flutter. So it is important to keep your line directly under the boat. Now, let's pretend I've hit the bottom. Let's go through some of the retrieves that we'd use while we're slow jigging. So the first retrieve I'd do is a long fall retrieve. So that means big lifts, and then follow your line back down. Big lift, and follow your line back down. Now while I'm doing that, I'm gonna take one rotation of the reel at a time. So one, follow the line down, one. Now that's gonna make your lure go up, up, up. Slowly but progressively move it up through the water column and just one turn at a time. But you're still getting plenty of falls and plenty of fluttering on the way down. Now. The way you know you're gonna hit is you'll be following that line down, all of a sudden it stops, and your line starts coiling on the, on the top of the water there, and you know a fish has got it. So you gotta give it a good hit then, and then start the fight. And other times I'll just grab it and run, and it's all on for young and old. Now the next retrieve I do is a lot smaller little jig. So I'll be going, just little flicks, let it sink down, little flicks, let it sink down, little flicks, let it sink down. And while I'm doing that, I'm just doing quarter turns of the reel, so again, it's slowly moving up through the water column. Now, if you've got fish on your sound and they're sitting hard on the bottom, you probably only want to do that for about five meters and then get it back down. But if you've got fish that are spanning from the bottom all the way to 20, 30 meters up the bottom, you want to work that jig the whole way through that, that, um, that patch of fish so they all get a good look at it and you can pick the predators out. Now, the last one, which is not slow jigging retrieve at all, it's just a pretty well a slower, fast jig style, would be where the fish are fired up, they're in a very much a feeding mood, and you wanna just create a fleeing bait fish, and that's where you just, something like that, just a little mechanical jigging motion, and that just gets it going quick up through the water column. But I like to do that for about maybe 
five to seven pumps and then do a dead stop. And quite often you'll find the snapper, the pearl perch, all those reef sort of species, they'll follow it up off the, off the bottom. They won't eat it while it's moving quick, but when it stops, they'll look at it and then come through and hit it there. So usually I'll just cycle through retrieves until I actually start getting fish. Some days it's easy, some days you actually have to really work it out and work out what they're doing on the day because they can be quite fussy. But other days I'll just be smashing jigs as you're dropping them down and it's, um, it's pretty easy. Um, when you hook up, if you've got a specialised jigging outfit like this, you don't want to go too hard on them. Again, you don't want to pull those hooks out because they're quite fine, they're quite light. And these rods aren't designed to be going hell for leather, lock up your spool and just hold on and pull. Um, they're quite light, they're designed for working that jig, not so much for fighting really hard. So you don't want to go too hard on it, you can blow your rod up. Keep that rod angled low and just short pumps and away you go and just slowly work them up the, up the water column. These reels are a nice high speed, so you get plenty of line back each turn. Once you get those fish off the bottom, just slow and steady, get them up, and you'll, uh, you won't have too much trouble. Uh, I don't think there's too much else. I think that's pretty well the basics on how you guys can get into uh, slow jigging. Give it a crack yourself, see if you like it. I know it's probably one of my favorite styles of fishing out here on the reefs. It is so much fun. It's very addictive though, that's the only problem. So if you get started, there's a chance you won't be able to stop and you'll end up with one of these in no time. But guys, that's the basics. If you've got any more questions, make sure you hit me up in the comments and I'll, uh, I'll try and answer them the best I can. But I think you've earned it now. We've done enough talking, let's watch some fishing. We had a great little morning session, so sit back, relax, and check that out. Cheers, guys. Same. Little pearless purchase. Well, the last time I was here, I was trying to catch pearl perch and couldn't get past the snapper. And I think we got past the snapper. We both hooked up, both dropped fish, and uh, both end up with pearlies. Give us a look at him. Well, first drop produced two pearlies. We're just about back in the zone there now. Well, I think there'll be some snapper down there. We had two good hookups that we missed. One on the bottom. So, fingers crossed we can convert them. Just coming back onto the mark now. You on the bottom? Not just yet. I think I've been small pearly again. What have we got here? Another pearly. Another pearl perch, he's too small. Oh, fish. Different action. Tez is on. He might be legal, but he's too small to worry about. Phantom on. Oh, they're getting smaller. Rodney rod holder. Have a drop. Oh, I think you'd be struggling to get there on time. Here it comes. What do we got here? Little snappy. Little squat. 
that's a target species, but there you go. It's the first keeper of the morning, little squire. They're not biting as hard as they usually do, but it's all right. Gonna have to work through the pearlies. Some days you can get no pearlies, and days like today, there's lots of pearlies, but they're all small, so might have to do some sorting through some fish, but that's all right. Nice quality little squire on the jig. Right on dawn, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Got him. That's got to be a small pearly. Oh, I got colour. What do we got? Tiny pearly. Plenty of them around. It's the wrong size. Might be an alright, Kingy. Hey. Tez has just been bumped on the way up. So there's a good chance that this is a uh, kingfish. Something a bit pelagic. It's got the. It's taken a bit of line. It's got the got the thumps. What do we got? That looks kingy to me. Or is it an ambo? It's an amber Jackson. Oh. Gave you a lot of curry for the size of him. A little ambo. Swings those hooks everywhere. Too late. There you go, there's the cause of all the commotion. Nice little amberjack on the slow jig that was worked not so slowly. The high speed retrieve just to change spots and he crunched it on the way up. But good little fish, good little line burner. Oh, the day of the undersized pearl. Oh, he might even, might even go. There you go, 40 centimetre pearly. He is coming home with us. <laughs> Made a lot easier without the wind, didn't it? Yeah. Got him. <laughs> A little bit. You got a bit of go. Oh, yeah, he's all right. Whoa. Double hookups. That's the go. Now we're in the zone. Oh, done him. Yeah, I can pull like a feel of pull. There's some colour. I think I've got a nice big pearly. Oh, double hook up. Uh, him. Oh yes. Oh, he's a Where is the net? That is an absolute donkey. That's the size and the species. Oh yes. That is borderline a Western Australian Jewfish. <laughs> Have a go at the size of that pearl perch. Oh my, you on? Yep. Oh, double hook up. You ripper. Pulling a bit too. We'll have a go at that for a pearl perch. That'd have to be getting close to four kilos of pearly. That is an absolute horse. That's probably my biggest pearly too. What a, oh, fish? Yep. Righto. Keep on him. Tez is on, just <laughs> constant pressure. Do you give him, give him a bit of a hit? Yeah. Alright, constant pressure. We've got a bit of a bite going on here. Tez has dropped a few, but uh, that guy is an absolute horse. Now, this jig, I can't talk to you about it too much because it's a proto. Oh! 
That's a good fish. Oh, where? Oh. Tez is onto a real nice fish here. This could be, could be a nice little snapper. We've got a nice bite going, but yeah, this jig I was telling you about, can't tell you too much about it just yet, but keep your eyes peeled at BCF. It's a Savage Gear jig, and it's uh, it's gonna be a ripper. Oh, I reckon that's a king. Oh, it might be. If it's a big snapper, if it's a snapper, it's a bloody hooter. This is a nice fish. Just gotta make sure you keep all the pressure on with these little assist hooks, because they create holes and they fall out. Pressure is the key to success here. If this is a snapper, it's huge. I reckon it's a king. You reckon? Yep. Okay. A king or an amberjack. Did he eat it on the pitch? On the uh, sink? On the drop. Yeah, on the drop. So he might be a nice snapper. I'd love if this is a snapper, I'd love to see it because it's gonna be big. He's raising a sweat. Raising a sweat, that's because you're in 15 layers of clothing. <laughs> it was 12 degrees this morning. 12 degrees. A lot of the uh, the people watching this will probably be laughing. That's Luxury. their summer. Luxury. The poor South Australians and Melbourneites and all that sort of stuff. 12 degrees is summer to them. Still got some starch. The fact that he's still going hard makes me think kingy. King. Uh, Either way, it'll be a nice little king. It's, spinning. it's a big snapper that's turning into a kingfish. <laughs> It is a kingfish. Little kingy. Oh, well, I thought. Still not a bad fish. Definitely a fun size, as you just found out. It was a load of fun. Just watch that swing up. Well, there you go. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a kingy. We call it for a snapper, kingy, all sorts of stuff. Turned out to be a nice little kingy on the slow pitch. That one uh, actually ate it legitimate slow pitch style. So on the drop, flutter, 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 bang. Oh, you got to you got to watch out those hooks. See how they've done the job there? They've spread out. They've gone one hook here, one hook there, one hook there, and another one. That one's hanging free. So it's shared the load, and that's what keeps the hooks in these fish and stops them from straightening out. On their own, a fish like this could probably straighten out one of these hooks, but together they are many attachment points. Yeah, but he do the job well. Are you going to keep him or let him go? Uh, I think we might keep him. There we go. The sashimi's been called for. <laughs> Later on today. There you go. Nice little kingy. Now I've got to get back to this absolute donkey. Well, I don't know where I got up to before the camera cut out, but yeah, those jigs will be coming to BCF very shortly. I'm just in the testing phase, making sure they work well here on Australian species. So far I was given two and I've only got one left. The first one got stolen by an absolute beast. And uh, that's the second drop I've had with that one. First drop equal to small pearl perch. Second drop, well, you just saw the size of that thing. An absolute weapon. So keep an eye out for them. But uh, yeah, we're gonna have a few more drops in this spot. It seems to be producing the absolute goods. Oh, I did then. Flirting with it. Oh, come back. Got him. Yes. Oh, that's a good fish. Nice work. Woo! Doesn't feel too bad. He has a dig every now and again, which is pearl esque. He hasn't opened his mouth though, so it could be a snap. Oh, he can't be far away now. Oh, I think snapper. Yeah? Oh, nice. He's a nice fish. I'll grab it. He's a nice fish. Bit more what we're after. Oh, hit. Got him. <laughs> He's come over there. Look at me dolphin, mate. 
Yeah. You, want, you want a slice, bro? Or you want a slice of the whole thing? Thanks for leaving it. I'll tell you what you don't realise on TV is how big dolphins actually are. Hey, mate. How are you? He is massive, that thing. Wish I had a pilchard for him. Oh, there you go. Nice little snapper. Oh. And another double hookup. How's yours feel? Yeah, I don't know. It's hard. He's doing a bit of everything. There you go. Another nice little panty. Not a massive fish, but good quality, good eating size. Starting to get that knob on his head. He's, uh, he's going to be a nice addition to the es esky, that one. And Tez is up one in the background. What do you got? Hello, a bit of pearly. Oh, not huge. Not the size we're chasing, not but huge. it's all right. Got to sort through them today. Not going crazy, but if you're working hard, you're getting a feed. So that's still a nice fish. You want to go down the back there. Oh, there they are. There they are. Oh no. That was on the drop. That was a snapper. Bugger. Yep. Early. Oh, nice little snap. Little micro snappy. Doing a spin. Just a little small plate size, but he's going to go back. Well, you may notice I look like a drowned rat now. That is because I chucked my jig out, got a loop around the reel, and it shot the, the right air out of my hand. But, I dove in, I got my setup back, but you may notice I'm squinting. The sunglasses are gone. And they are, I dare say, on their way to the bottom right now. But that's okay, because I got the rod back. That's the, that's the big bit. And I didn't, I didn't go in with my GoPro and hat on, so. That's another win, so there you go. It's not all fun and games out here. Sometimes you get your ass kicked. Oh, double hooker. Miniature, miniature snipper. I'm gonna unhook this guy in the water. The snapper pearly combo. I flick the hooks out of him in the water too. So they go down. Two, see you mate. Set of hooks. So get down there. Get down there. There he goes. Well, there you go, legends. I hope you enjoyed the video, and most of all, I hope you learned a few tips and tricks to kickstart your slow jigging addiction. Now, if you're anything like me, it won't take too many trips before you are absolutely well and truly hooked. Now, if you have any more questions about slow jigging or anything else you saw in this video, feel free to ask away in the comments section below. I'll be going through it and replying to all comments. So even if you just want to say good day, leave it in the comments section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you enjoyed the video and found it interesting, make sure you show the channel some support and crush that like button. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe because there is plenty more fishing action to come. Until next week, guys, catch you out there. Hope you have a good one. Cheers.